relationship is the correspondence. Degree of happiness is the question mark and debate. We learn about life through questions. How do we shed our desires? Should a leader try to change such people? Insecurities start anytime, anywhere, any age. Their conduct has to be as per their profession. Does it mean that the family values are somewhere on the downfall? To answer some of these, Mr. Praveen Mankar, founder of Pratibim Charitable Trust, brings to you Face to Face. This week, we are talking about relationships. The word relationship itself carries a ship. And it is this ship that carries our relation from birth to its existence. The paramount question that comes to our mind is what is a relationship? And how would you define a perfect relationship? A relationship is a correspondence. So when I say correspondence, it is between two people or more than two people. There is a transmitter and there is a receiver. So right now you are speaking to me, I am replying to you. So there is a correspondence between you and me. You are receiving whatever I am saying. You are transmitting whatever you wish to say. So you have two components, reception and transmission. Similarly, I have two components, reception and transmission. So in this relationship between two people, there are four things happening. You are a receiver and transmitter, I am a receiver and transmitter. So this is as far as relationship is concerned. There is no such thing as a perfect relationship. There is a happy relationship or an unhappy relationship. When you say there is a happy relationship, then the expectations are fulfilled. Therefore, you are happy, I am happy. Our relationship is happy. Expectations are not fulfilled. And therefore, we have an unhappy relationship. Now, I am talking of two extremes, happy and unhappy. But life always does not operate at extremes. It operates in between. So, either you are partially happy. When I say partially, it could be just to peg some figures, 25% happy, 50% happy, 75% happy or 100% happy. So there are degrees of happiness. So in a relationship, there are degrees of happiness. There is no such thing as a perfect relationship. So these degrees can be worked upon? Sure. I can work towards making this relationship happier. Let's say it was 25-75, 25 happy, 75 unhappy. I can work towards making it 50-50. If I have reached 50-50, I can work towards making it 75-25. Yes, it can be worked. So, it's a continuous process. If you want. Many a, many a times we are unconscious of our relationships. Take within our own families. You are living with your parents. You are unconscious of the kind of relationship you are having with your parent. Till somebody points out, hey, you are rude to your father. You are misbehaving with your mother. Or somebody says, Father is a very cranky person, he is shouting all the time. You got accustomed to that behavior and it doesn't bother you. So you are not aware that this relationship is not the happiest relationship and I need to work on it. Till somebody points out that it needs working upon. Or till it becomes unbearable for you and then either you dissociate, break the relationship or you work on the relationship and try to make it more harmonious. But many a times, or I think it's always, expectations are intrinsic to humans. So how do we manage that in a relationship? That's a good word you used because everybody has expectations and it's not wrong to have expectations. Expecting a particular result is fine, but insisting that the same result should happen, that's unrealistic. I can expect to score 100 marks in, a, in an exam, nothing wrong with expecting that. But if I score 99 and I become terribly upset that I missed one mark, that's unrealistic because I must be mature enough to accept, that's the second word, accept what comes my way. When the expectation is not fulfilled, 
the next best thing is to accept the result. It does not mean tolerate the mediocre. By no stretch of imagination, I am suggesting that you should tolerate the mediocre. Yes, I had an expectation of a 100 percent result. I scored 78 percent. So, there is a scope for improvement by 22 percent. Next time, I scored 87 percent. I still have a gap of 13 percent. I may never reach 100 percent. But striving to improve on yesterday is the key. That is the only way I can improve my status as of today. But here again it is like it is rightly said that there is no one way. In some relationship, it is just one partner who is a giver. At the cost of even being taken for granted. So, how does one manage or balance such a relationship? It is again individualistic. If again let us take our own example. If you are a giver and I am constantly exploiting because you are giving, it is up to you. Are you happy giving? Then what is wrong? You have a grouse, you have a complaint that oh I am the only one who is giving in this relationship, this, this guy does not contribute to the relationship then there is an issue, then it needs to be worked on. It can be worked on in different ways. It can be communicated that, hey, this I think is a one-way traffic. I am the one who is constantly giving and you are the one who is constantly taking. We need to change that. And I have a choice to accept or to reject. I may accept what you are saying is true and I may work towards, okay, let me start giving. Or I may say, no, this is the way I am, like it or lump it. Now, it is your call whether you want to continue with this relationship and be the giver because it still makes you happy and you are happy to retain that relationship and the status quo is maintained. You are not happy with the status, choice is again yours. Now, the choice flips back to me. I see this relationship breaking because you are not willing to continuously give. Choice is mine. Do I want to continue this relationship? Or should I say, okay, jati hai to jane de. So, it is again a matter of choice of the individual. Any relationship can be sustained by choice. Let us not talk abstract. Let us talk of a husband and wife. There is a relationship in which one partner is giving, another partner is constantly taking. Again, one way street in a marriage. Should we give up? A couple might ask each other, should we give up? That means, should we separate? Should we divorce? Then by that logic, you would have chaos in the society. All such relationships would be on a breakdown mode. Again, there is a choice. People choose to be happy to maintain the relationship. People choose to be unhappy to maintain the relationship. Both ways. So, this choice that we are talking about is not a compromise. To okay. be in it that could relationship. Be. It could be. A choice could be a problem. I choose to be the giver. Though I am unhappy being only the giver with you not giving me anything in return. But I made a choice. It is an unhappy choice. But I made it because the choice I have is separation which is even worse. So, between the two choices to continue the relationship the way it is that I be the giver and you do not give anything in return. And the second choice is breaking the relationship. I prefer not to break the relationship, continue, status quo, I am not happy, but I made the choice. So, I will constantly be unhappy, but I have chosen to be unhappy. Chosen to be unhappy. Yes. For the sake of because balancing the other choice, the, the other choice is not viable for me. The separation choice is not viable for me. Take for example, I am talking of say 20, 25 years ago when all ladies were not necessarily working or qualified to work. So, they were dependent on the income of the husband. Now, you have gone into the relationship of a husband and wife for 10-15 years with children. Where is the choice to the lady to separate? How will she sustain financially? So, she has no choice but to stay with this person who is a taker without giving anything in return. Her choice is separate from him. But life will be miserable without finance. So, she chooses to be unhappy but sustain the relationship. So, it is a choice of unhappiness. We have been seeing in this due to the pandemic. Everyone has been cooped up at home with each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is creating a lot of havoc in everybody's life. 
because it's a choice even though it's a choice and a compromise but being together how does one look into that the pandemic situation is not a choice it is thrust upon us yeah so suppose a family is cooped up in a house with no avenue to venture out and have their own time and space the whole subject is time and space you are cooped up in a small space and you are necessarily required to share time now there is a law of diminishing returns the more you indulge in that kind of association the returns that come to you when i say returns returns are always happy returns the returns start diminishing the problem of familiarity crops up i start getting more irritable and it works for everybody in identical manners the duration and the intensity may vary for you it may take 3 weeks before you start getting irritated for somebody else it may take 1 week before he or she starts getting irritated for you the level of irritation is extremely high for somebody the level of irritation is okay i'm tolerating chalta hai so degrees vary but the law of diminishing return is in operation simply because you have no choice but to stay together given the pandemic situation so yes in a way you are right that relationships are strained but does it mean that it's causing havoc not necessarily some people have found the pandemic as a blessing that we never had time with our families we never got to know each other but if you go by statistics i am not aware of what the statistics indicates whether it has caused havoc or it has integrated families statistically again it will vary from region to region the dynamics of love respect tolerance has changed quite a bit separate subject it has got a uh, very little correspondence with the pandemic situation has the love got diluted because of the pandemic i am not sure has it got increased because of the pandemic again i am not sure this is a highly variable subject but going back to the original subject relationship relationship is a correspondence degree of happiness is the question mark and debate so why do relationships go from love to hate ah <laughs> love to hate again familiarity i love eating sweets so let's say jalebis if i keep 24 jalebis in front of you and ask you to eat 24 jalebis would you be happy to eat 24 jalebis too much of it. too much right so anything in excess changes your again the law of diminishing returns but i have not eaten jalebi for the last 2 years and suddenly somebody offers me a plate of jalebis i will definitely enjoy two jalebis because i love jalebis now you feed me jalebis every day enough so it's a simple economics law diminishing returns rishte na samjho to pahad jaise mushkil aur samjho to ekdam aasan if you have some questions about life please connect with us do not forget to like share subscribe and press the bell icon for weekly updates